Hello YouTube, we are live again on Twitch and this time we're going to build a React app, a movies app with React. Um, we created this app actually in vanilla JavaScript in a previous coding challenge where we built 10 apps in uh, 10 hours. That was a long stream. Uh, and now I want to take this project and convert it to React. I'll basically do it from scratch, but we'll have um, this project as an example of how it should like work. Um, I used MPX create React app to create a simple React app and I removed the files uh, we don't need. Basically, we just have index.js, which renders the app and uh, app.js, which will be the main component of our application. Okay, now this is how the project looks like the final project. Uh, we have a bunch of movies which are featured, like the best movies at the moment. And whenever we hover over, we get an overview of what the movie is about. We get the rating, the title, and the image. And also we have a feature that we can search. For example, we want Avengers with an E that and we get Avengers movies here. It's not very complicated, but it looks pretty cool. I also have the API ready, uh, three API links. There is an API key I got from a friend, Mihai. We use this exact same API to build a project. So we're going to use this uh, URL to get all the feature projects. Then we're going to use this one to get the image, the thumbnails. Okay, and we have the search API, which we just need to add at the end the query, like as we did Avengers, and it will call the API and update the movies. All right, so yeah, let's start working on the single um, movie component which then we're going to loop over all the movies we get from the API and we're going to showcase them. So here we're going to create a components folder, components, and let's create a movie, movie component. All right, uh, import react from react and let's have movie, will be a function and it will uh, I think we don't need that I just did div class name of movie all right and here we're going to export default movie good and let's just have an example here of title movie oh, this is a movie component all right, we're going to come in later and add all the things we have from the API. And now, here we can go and import our movie component from components slash movie. And we can use it here in our app, which we're going to loop over our movies. Now we don't have any, but let's just pretend that we have movies like uh, one, two, three, an array of three movies. And we're going to loop over the movies. We're mapping and we get the movie. And for each movie, we're going to create a movie component. All right, now this is our React app. We just have some basic styling, uh, pop-ins font and background color. But if everything works correctly, we should see the movie component displayed three times. By the way, I have the chat, the stream, uh, the Twitch chat in the right, in case I mess up <laughs> and they can help. All right, good. So now we see the movies components three times because we have three items in the array. Now let's call the API and get the real data. Yay, says the chat. 
All right, let me get the API from here. I think I'll just get all of these. Uh, move it here. Okay. So we have the API. Let's call it featured. Featured API. Like that. Uh, usually you shouldn't uh, have the API key in a string here. You should add it and hide this API key. But this being a demo project, it's it's okay this time. Images. Now let's call image API and use this. And we're going to just append a URL. You're going to see in a moment. And here we're going to have the search API. And again, we're going to append the query. We should probably, hmm, I'm thinking, add a file. But yeah, the chat says we won't steal it. <laughs> All right, yeah, don't. Good. Now let's see how we do in React. We want to call this API, the featured API, and we want to get the movies. So there is use effect, which I'm still trying to learn because I haven't used it a lot. Uh, we want to have a movies and set movies from also use state so we're going to call the use state hook uh yes right use state and by default we're going to have an empty array so no movies uh, and we're going to set the movies when we get the movies from the api and for that we need to use the use the use effect hook all right, uh, and inside we need to call the API. So fetch, let's see, fetch featured API, which we return a promise, and and we do, let's see, movies uh, response, wait, and this can be a sync, right? Not 100% sure, but we'll test. Movies, uh, JSON, or I guess this will be the movies. Await uh, movies response.json. Okay, and now we can set the movies to be the movies. Let's call it movies um, just so we differentiate from this. Movies. R. <laughs> Something like that. All right. And we need to have this here as we don't have dependencies for this use effect. It cannot be a sync, says someone. Okay. And then uh, you can have an async function inside. Or we need to do it with promises. Uh, with then. Let's see what happens. Let's just learn what happens if we do that. All right, movies map is not a function. Uh, okay, that's interesting. And that. The movies that map should be an array. Okay. Why is not an array? I guess we can check movies that length greater than zero as the length. All right, so that one solved. An effective function must do not return anything besides a function. Okay, looks like use it. All right, so shouldn't return. Probably returns a promise, so that's why. All right, let's do the old way. So fetch and then we get a response, a response to JSON, and then we get data, and we just do uh, this, set movies, data. We also need to see what we have in the data. I think that's the issue. 
The chat says told ya. All right. Yeah, you did. Uh, let's console log the data. Data. So we can see, I think, it's not directly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So basically, we get uh, we get the results, which is the rate of movies we want. Okay, dokey. So we have data here. We need basically data that results. All right. And now we should have this movie component 20 times. Awesome. It's good. Uh, let me move this again on the second row because I want to, well, make it look pretty. And here for the movies, let's see what we want. We want to add the data and we get the data from the movie. Uh, and do we have an ID? We could use, yeah, we have an ID. So here, let's use a key. Data, uh, movie, that ID as a key. R, yeah. Now we go back to our movie component and we're going to have all the data here we need. And let's see from the props, right? This is the props. And we want to get the following. We want the uh, let me check. I forgot. We want the overview. We want the poster path, and we want the vote average and the title. So <laughs> let's break it down here. Title. We want poster path. We want uh, overview and both average. Okay, and now I guess this could go here because this is where you use it, right? To get the image. Okay, and let's use all the data we got. Not sure this is auto. Ah, good. Now looks better. So we're going to have an image here, which will use source uh, image API plus the poster path. All right, and as an alt, let's use the title. All right, will we have 10 Im uh, 20 images? All right, almost. Undefined poster path. Why is this undefined? Oh, I forgot to save. Hmm. So we get. The... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know, I know, I know. My bad. I added everything from the movie in a data prop. But what we could do is just uh, spread it. So we'll get all the props separately. All right, look at that. Now we got all the nice images. And most likely we have the title and everything. <laughs> hey, Mihai, welcome to the stream. And Mihai is the guy who gave us the API key. <laughs> All right, uh, so now we can use the data. We already have the data. Oh, how would this look? Basically, we have a container and all these tiles are the movie. Okay, let's redo it. I think they have a header, movie header, uh, where the image goes. And then they have a movie, or maybe not. It doesn't look like a header. I'm doing this from scratch, so hold on. You make that but in React now? Yes, this is what we're doing. Uh, let's have a movie info. All right, and here we have an H3 for the title. And we're going to have a span for the average, vote average, like that. 
still not looking good, but look at that. We have the data. Let's make it look better. In the CSS, the movie, let's make it a width, fixed width of uh, 300 pixels. And the movie image, I wanted a max width of 100%. All right, look at that, perfect. Now we need a container for these. So here, let's call class name movie container because we want to target that movie container and make it display flex so that they're next to each other and flex direction, uh, flex wrap, wrap so they will wrap to the next line. Get add some margin, one RAM around them. Okay. They look pretty big, right? Yeah, maybe 250. Oops. Okay, ish. Good. Now each of the movie will have a background color of. I need this color. I guess I could copy the style, but maybe someone wants to learn how to do this. But yeah. All right, now the movie info will also have uh, display flex. Movie info H3 will have margin zero, and this will have a padding 1.5 rem. La mm, too much. Far rem. Okay, and we want align items center and justify content space between. All right, good. Let's have a bit of port radius, three pixels, and a box shadow. Three pixels, three pixels, five pixels, RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.21. All right, so they look pretty. Uh, and overflow, you can see there the corners of the images, they're not cut off. So with overflow hidden, they will be. All right, these are all the images. What we have in the first project is that whenever we hover over, we get this nice overview. And that's easily done by, well, we need to add the information somewhere. So let's edit it movie over movie over. And here we're going to say H uh, two overview. And then in a paragraph, let's put the overview like that. Okay, good. But with CSS, we're going to hide it. Well, movie overview. Uh, we're going to basically move you over, sorry. Um, have it on top, because with position absolute. Top, uh, bottom zero. Like that. Left zero, right zero. Have a background color of white. Yeah, they're there. <laughs> and we want the movie container. Uh, this container, which is the movie, to be position relative so that now these boxes, which they appear there, will be relative to their parent, like that. The color, let's use the color for the background color to be inside because the text now is white. And that hmm. looks like a bit too big. So let's add a padding. One RAM because we like that. Oh, I think I'm zoomed in. Oh, that's why it's so big because I was zoomed in. My bad. So I guess we can go back to 300 here. All right. And by default, let's have this hidden. So the transition, uh, then transform should be translate x 
so it will be pushed down 100% and because we have overflow hidden on the parent we won't see it like that but whenever we hover over the movie we want the movie over to go back so transform translate x to be 0 and look at that whenever we hover it will appear now let's add a bit add a bit of transition just to make it smooth transform uh, 0 0.3 seconds is in out and now whenever we hover oh translate I use the X so it's left to right I want Y okay good so now it goes from the bottom and we can see the movie information pretty pretty cool there was one issue yeah so you can see if the overview is too big then uh it will be cut off so let's do um, overflow auto let's see now yeah, it still doesn't work. Uh, max height 100%. All right, good. Now, if it's bigger, it will be rollable. Maybe a bit of border radius at the top, just to make it stand out a bit. Let's copy this and put it here. And instead of all the four corners, I want border, top, left, radius, and border, top, right, radius. Okay. It's just a subtle difference, but, oh, it works. Good, so now we got the information. Oh, look at that, there is one pixel there. Just one. And I think it's because of the box shadow which wait 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 now the box shadow is down I want it up which is negative on the y-axis okay and you can see the pixel there so let's transform it more 102 all right now it's gone and whenever you hover it's appearing good that's nice we have those which are coming from the API. You can see all the movies. And also it's responsive by default because we used uh, flex wrap. The last thing to do is to have the search bar. So we need that component. Okie dokie, let's see. Should we have a different component? Let's do it here and then can think if we move it out or not so a uh, header and inside of this we're going to have an input type text placeholder v search yeah like that uh, and we need a class name so we can style it search all right this is for now let's make it let's make the visual the header I want it to be this background color and have the padding like that hmm looking pretty interesting because uh, here when you display flex and flex direction column so they'll go on top of each other now the header uh, the but oh my bad so this goes inside the body which means the movie container should be changed uh where where are we here the movie container flex wrap all right but then if we change the flex direction column the movies will go on top of each other so we need another container which is our div here with, of with an idea of root. Let's make this class uh, root. This will be pretty much its parent. 
All right, so now this should go on route and it should work, you know. Hmm. But this should be outside now, <laughs> like here. Okie dokie. Um, type search in the input. Yeah, type search. All right, hold on. Yes. So the root should be the parent of the header and the movie container. Or, yeah, you can't have two components here, it will cry like that. <laughs> So, uh, or I think there was a way. Oh, yeah, let's use this. The React fragment, right? Yeah, awesome. And now they go directly to the inside our root and we'll have the header as we want it. Yeah, fragment. All right, the chat agrees. <laughs> okay, we're learning together, which is probably good and let's move this to the end so uh, justify contents uh, flex end oops 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 in the header which is display flex all right awesome and now let's style that search input we want uh, font family to be inherit we want font size to be 1.2 ram uh, border Two pixel solid this color. I think that's what I used. Okay. Border radius 50 pixels. Background color transparent. And uh, I think color. Let's see. Can I do it in one go? Almost. <laughs> it needs some padding. 0 0.5 RAM and 1.5 RAM. Okay. Nice. It's bigger though. <laughs> but yeah, it's not that bad. Okay. That someone says in the chat that uh, she would use an empty div. Yeah, basically what we needed is to have these two to be a children of the root div. Because the root div is a display flex and the flex section is on column. So this is on top, the header is on top of the movies container. And uh, if we added a div, then we had the same problem as we had before. This would not be oh but yeah never mind <laughs> uh this is a regular display block so the header will go on top <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a commercial project no uh no it's not a pro this is just a project we're doing for fun we're learning. Uh, okie dokie. We now need to search. So whenever we modify this input uh, and we hit enter, we want to submit a form which will call again, well, which will call this API and it will change the movies. Let's do a form here. And this form will have an onSubmit handler. Handle on submit. Const handle on submit. We have the event and we don't want to submit the form. Because now if we type anything and hit enter it will submit the form and it will refresh the page, but we don't want that. So we're going to use e-prevent, prevent, prevent uh, default. 
And now we need to get somehow what's typed in this input. And if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> I can do this by setting a value to be um, the search term, which we need to have a piece of state for it. So the search term, and we want to set the search term. Use state, by default, the search term will be empty, uh, an empty string. And this will have an on change event, which will do handle uh, on change. Okay, handle on change. We'll have the E, which will be this, refer to this event. And what we want is to set the search term to be e.target.value. Okay. Good, and now we should have access to that term. Let's see if this still works. All right, we can edit. I'll need to... Uh, let's leave this to be color white. Uh, well, say white. Ah, good. Okay, so this is change, is setting the search term, and what we can do here is to uh, call the set movies again, but with a new API. So instead of features API, we're going to use the search API, and we're going to append the search term. We're going to call the search API with the search term, and we're going to reset the movies with the data we got from this API call, which could be in another function. Hmm. For now, let's leave it like this and see if it works. We're going to search for Flash. And look at that. We're calling the API and we get all the Flash movies. Let's do some other things here. Uh, let's set search term to be an empty string. We can even see if it's not an empty string. If search term, then we can do the fetch and then empty the search term. Okay. So we search for flash, enter, and it will show the movies and empty in the field. I want some CSS for the search. Search active outline none. All right. Uh, search. Hmm. Focus. All right, good. It was focused. My bad. Uh, shouldn't you empty the search term after the promise results? Yeah, that's actually good. Good point. Although, what I was thinking is to use this inside a function we can create. Uh, let's create here. Get movies. And we're going to provide the API. And then we can all this inside, we're going to call this API, uh, use this API, and use the get movies here. Get movies, featured API, and again, get movies here with the search API plus search term. Okay, and then we empty the field. Something's wrong. Let's see. Parsing unexpected token. Oops. Oh, oh, okay, 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 my bad. Error function, like this. Okay, good. So this should be it. Uh, we want, I don't know, the big, <laughs> big, big bang theory. Oh, but this is all the movies. That's the yeah, and it uh, works. <laughs> a 
though we did it live, uh, I haven't anything prepared. One thing I forgot is to add that span there, the, uh, the style for the span. The way we can do it is, where is the span? We can have a class name and a class name, okay? And here we can set vote color or set vote class. And we pass in the vote average. And this can be another function. Set vote class, it gets the vote. And here we can return a class name, which then we can use in CSS to um, color it. So return, let's see. I guess if vote is greater or equal than eight, return uh, green. Else if vote greater than or equal than six, return uh, orange. And else return red like that it will return a class name we also need another class here so let's use tag and this okay and two lines like that. So we have the class of tag and then we set the color from this function we created and let's style it. Okay. Uh, move is over, move is over. Okay. Tag. We want it to, to have by default a background color of this. Okay, a bit of padding, one that might be too much. 0 0.5 RAM. All right. Border radius, five pixels. Okay, and now the tag dot uh, green should be a color. Tag dot orange and tag dot red. Color. Let's just use green, orange, and red. All right, good. Do we have any? Which is a good movie? Chat, let me know. Like Godfather, right? Yeah, I'll look at that. It's green. And let's also make it bold. Font size bold. Don't have a bold font. I do. Hmm. Font. Whoa, wait, sorry. Thank you, chat. All right, good. So there we go. Uh, this is our little React app, which is a copy of a vanilla JavaScript project we did. I didn't look at the code for this. This is why this might be different probably is but now it's with react uh, someone says that the green needs some contrast so let's make it lighter like this okay and it should be also responsive i don't like when it like this so let's do movie container align at the center no respect content center all right Okay, so now it will always be in the center. Good. Uh, maybe add a default image if there isn't any image. Someone? Yeah, you can see here that they don't have a default image they provide the, for some movies. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, in the movies component. We need to check if we have an image. Let's do here. 
plus. Okay, like this. Poster pet, if we have it, then poster pet. Otherwise, uh, random image. Let's see, unsplash. Let's see, movie. Okay, let's use this from Jacob Owens. Unsplash. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We don't have this, then we don't need to call the API. All right, let me put this here. But basically, this also should go here. So if we have the poster image, we add the poster uh, path to the image URL. Otherwise, we just show this image. Okay, and let's see. Flash, I think they had an image. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Although the image is not too good. Let's fix the styling a bit. Uh, image, max width, uh, height. Let's do 500 pixels. Too much. 400 pixels. And object fit, hover. Okay, good. And now these don't have. Uh, if you have if you see this then it doesn't have a background image by default this looks hmm uh, max width let's put width 100 okay yeah so now it's stretched although some images are too stretched <laughs> uh, which means we need less width or bigger height okay let's use bigger height uh all right i hope you like this tutorial and this format of me doing it live let me know in the comments if you did also if you like give it a like and subscribe if you haven't to the channel uh, for more tutorials like this yeah, let me know how you like it. Have a great day. Bye.